Hello there. My name's Gordon Muir. I'm a consultant urologist at King's College Hospital and at London Bridge Hospital. And I've been carrying on prostate laser and other minimally invasive surgery for well over 20 years now. Um, one of the things I teach my trainees is that there's nothing new under the sun. And I have a little slide I use to tell them that if you make a hole in the prostate, a man will do very well. And that usually means that all of his symptoms will go away, although that's not always the case. Uh, we don't necessarily have to make a hole in the prostate, but that's the most guaranteed way to get men peeing well. The other thing I tell them is it's not appropriate nowadays for a surgeon to tell a patient what he wants. Uh, it's up to the patient to decide. And I show uh, as quite a lot of meetings this picture of four cars uh, as to which is the best. Well, we've got a beautiful classic Ferrari, a techn technologically amazing Lexus, a rugged but rugby luxurious Range Rover, and the bargain basement, but never goes wrong, two CD. I wouldn't know which the best car is. They do their job for the individual. And I think that's what we must be very careful of. Don't impose what we offer onto patients, but ask them what they want. Of course, some men don't have as much of a choice. I think talking about the green light laser, which I was the first person I think in Europe to use and the first person in the world to use the current version of it, and I've been using it now for 18 years in its various iterations. Green light is probably the most versatile of all the options we have for treating men with benign prostatic disease, because there are no barriers, prostate size, age, um, whether men are in anticoagulation, it doesn't matter. We can treat all these men very, very well. And we can also modulate the risk of sexual side effects to a degree. Now, what does green light laser do? Well, first of all, if we look at a slide here, it does the same job as the traditional TURP. Uh, simple as that, we put a telescope down the inside of the penis, we use the laser to vaporize a hole in the middle of the prostate, and unlike TURP, there's usually very little bleeding, uh, we can usually send the patient home the same day, about 95% of my patients a day case. And we usually don't need to put a catheter in for more than an hour after the operation. So it has these benefits. The risk of bleeding is dramatically lower than TURP. And almost half of my patients are in anticoagulation when we do the surgery. Uh, the data we've got comes from lots and lots of studies and what I would argue is the best of a randomized trial the Goliath study in the treatment of men with BPH. And I'll show you a video now just to give you an idea of what it looks like, although you're probably unlikely to look down your own penis and see your prostate. But if you do end up having this done, make sure your surgeon saves the video for you. Here we go. So this is going to show the view of the green light laser as it's working inside the patient. We try not to let the laser touch the prostate tissue. And Unlike the holmium laser, this laser is not absorbed by water, so it goes straight into the prostate and it causes instant vaporization of the prostate tissue. And you see here the scope is being drawn backwards and the pink prostate tissue is vaporizing away. The bubbles you see here are just steam. They're steam from the water inside the cells of the prostate. Um, we do this in a very systematic manner. We can take a small amount away, we take a very large amount away, uh, while there isn't a top prostate size, it does take a very long time for the big ones. But here's the end of the operation, nice big goblet shaped hole in the middle of the prostate. No irrigation here, almost no bleeding, and this man will be able to have his catheter out and go home the same day. So I offer men pretty well everything there is to offer in the field of Lutz BPH surgery, apart from TURP, unless we're doing trials nowadays. Most of my patients are still choosing green light. And I think part of that is that over the years, we've been trying to work out uh, why men develop ejaculatory dysfunction. Uh, and we think it's not a dry orgasm because the semen drops back in the bladder. It's because we seal the ducts shut. And with my igloo group, uh, colleagues in America and Europe and Australia, we've been able to modify the operation such that we bring the risk of a dry orgasm down to only about 13%. So a big difference from the 78 to 80% we see with classical surgery. Um, equally, I see a lot of men who are anticoagulated. I actually, yesterday I treated three men, all in retention, all in anticoagulation, and all home last night without a catheter. So even after 20 years of this, you still get quite pleased with the results. 
although I shouldn't blow my own trumpet. So there is no man who can't benefit really from green light laser prostatectomy. It may be the right thing definitely for one individual. It may be a choice of options. And I think it's a great tool. Uh, I would never go back to TURP, but I think for the man who's considering surgery, always check the options you have and consider what's best for you. So I think there are a lot of options and as surgeons, I think we're very lucky to have all these choices nowadays. And I hope that most patients are being able to access these choices. I do see some patients who say, you know, why are you offering me so many things? And sometimes I do think, you know, if you go to somebody who's got a hammer, he will look on you as a nail. So much better to go to a urologist who has a full toolbox who can offer you the choices and then you can be the one who makes the decision as to what is best for you.